standing in my father's study, I held the letter in shaking hands. He had kept secrets, dark ones, and now that he was gone, I was left to deal with them alone. That letter, crumpled from years of hiding, held the truth about everything I'd been lied to about, the family I never knew, the sister I never met, and the one person I thought I could trust most. But as I read, I realized the man I thought was my father had kept something far more devastating than a mere secret. I wasn't sure if I would ever forgive him, but first, I had to find out who I really was. My father, Stephen Taylor, died suddenly of a heart attack at 62, leaving behind a carefully curated legacy as a pillar of the community, a well-respected lawyer, and a family man. For as long as I could remember, he was my guide, the unwavering presence in my life. I always admired him, he seemed wise, fair, and kind, the kind of father any son would be proud of. But that image shattered into pieces in less than an hour. It happened as I was sorting through his things. In a drawer, under a stack of old receipts, there was an envelope with my name written in faded blue ink. Inside, I found a handwritten note, three pages long, in my father's unmistakable handwriting. Ethan, it began, if you're reading this, then I've passed on, and it's time you knew the truth, the next words made my head spin. He wrote about a half-sister, Sarah, who lived in a small town in Texas, miles away from where we'd ever gone. A girl he'd kept for me, raised by relatives, a sister he'd seen only in his dreams because he'd chosen to keep her hidden. It was for the best, he wrote, for you and for her. He didn't say why, only that it had been a decision made out of love and necessity. And then, at the very bottom, almost as an afterthought, he added, if you ever want answers, find her. Questions consumed me. Why did he keep her a secret? Why did he pretend we were his only family? I felt betrayed, angry that I had been kept in the dark for so long, but at the same time, a thread of curiosity pulled me in. I wanted to know who Sarah was and why she'd been erased from our lives. With a sinking feeling in my stomach, I searched through the rest of his belongings. There were clues. An old, worn photograph of a little girl with curly brown hair, Sarah, standing next to a tree with my father smiling behind her. She looked to be around five or six, her wide, serious eyes staring directly at the camera. She looked almost familiar, like a part of me I didn't know existed. That night, sleep was impossible. I thought about my childhood, the way my father had always seemed to carry a silent burden, but I'd written it off as work stress or some personal melancholy. Now, I couldn't shake the feeling that his quietness was laced with something darker. The next morning, I packed my bags, leaving behind my Chicago apartment for the rural town of Millwood, Texas, the place he mentioned in his letter. Millwood was everything Chicago wasn't, dusty, quiet, and deserted. I rented a room in the town's only motel, a faded blue building with peeling paint and a neon sign that flickered as if it were alive. I was nervous. I'd never felt so lost, so unsure of what I was even looking for. All I had was an address scribbled on the back of the photograph. When I finally reached the address, my heart pounded. The house was small, tucked away behind thick trees, and looked like it had been there for decades. I walked up to the front door, but before I could knock, it opened. A woman in her thirties, tall with curly brown hair that seemed hauntingly familiar, looked at me with a mixture of shock and recognition. You're, Ethan, aren't you? She asked, her voice thick with an accent I hadn't expected. Yes, I stammered, unsure of what else to say. She stood there, staring, as though looking at a ghost. I'm Sarah, she said finally, extending a hand, though she seemed hesitant. I'm guessing you didn't know about me either? The honesty in her gaze left me speechless. I nodded, swallowing the emotions building up. Number. I. I didn't. He never told me. Her face softened, and she nodded, stepping aside so I could come in. I only found out a few years ago, too, she said, motioning for me to sit on the well-worn couch. I think he kept us apart because of our uncle. Uncle, Raymond. That man nearly destroyed my life. I blinked, surprised. The mention of an uncle was new information. We never had any. Uncle Raymond in my life. No stories about him or any visits from family besides my grandparents. I don't understand, I said. Who is he? I've never heard of him. She looked at me, a pained expression crossing her face. Raymond Taylor was our father's brother. He was involved in some very dangerous things, Ethan. Organized crime, smuggling. From what I know, our father left town because of him. To protect himself and, she hesitated, and me. As Sarah explained, I felt my mind race to piece together the fragments. Raymond had been a powerful figure in Millwood, his influence shaping everything in this town. But he had a temper, a ruthlessness that few survived unscathed. According to Sarah, 
My father had tried to confront him once, but the fallout was devastating. Raymond had threatened to ruin him, to take away what he loved most. That's when my father had made a drastic choice, to leave Sarah in the care of distant relatives in Millwood and flee to Chicago with my mother and me. The air between us grew heavy, filled with everything left unsaid. I sensed Sarah held back as she spoke, perhaps out of old pain or a reluctance to relive those dark memories, but I needed to know more. Why now? I asked, breaking the silence. Why did he leave you that way? Why did he never tell me? She looked away, biting her lip, her fingers running along the edge of the coffee table. Because Raymond is still looking for us. At least, he's been looking for me. A cold shock washed over me. Still looking for her? I barely understood who this uncle was, and now I was finding out he'd been searching for her. I forced myself to stay calm, but my voice trembled as I asked, Sarah, what does he want from you? She sighed deeply, her face drawn with a mixture of fear and defiance. Uncle Raymond, he's not like anyone you've ever met, Ethan. He controls people, scares them into doing whatever he wants. My father, our father, tried to protect us by staying away from him, but Raymond has his ways of finding people. Her gaze grew distant. He'd nearly forgotten about me until last year. I don't know why, but he suddenly started leaving messages, calling me, saying I owed him. He doesn't let go, Ethan. Every word she said added another layer of dread. I felt myself stiffen, wanting to protect her yet reeling from the reality I'd walked into. I couldn't just leave this alone, not now. What does he want you to do? I asked, leaning forward. Money, she replied simply, almost as if it were a given. I don't know why, but Raymond's desperate. He keeps saying he needs help, that I'm the only one who can get it for him. Her voice dropped to a whisper. I think he's in trouble, big trouble, and he thinks that since our father cut him off, I'm his only lifeline. The room felt claustrophobic, and I found myself pacing back and forth, questions flooding my mind. Why had our father let things get to this point? If he had just told us, we might have been prepared for this, for Raymond. I couldn't help but feel that my father's silence had been as damaging as Raymond's threats. But I knew one thing, I wasn't leaving until I found out how to end this. Sarah might not know me, but she was still my sister, and I had a responsibility to protect her. Sarah, listen, I don't know how we're supposed to handle this, but I'm here now, you're not alone in this. The words felt strange coming out of my mouth, I'd never had a sibling, never taken on this kind of responsibility, but seeing the relief in her eyes, I knew it was the right thing to say. She nodded swallowing hard. I didn't think you'd even come. I. I was ready to go into hiding if I had to. It's just that. He's been getting more desperate. Do you have any idea where he is? I asked, hoping we could get ahead of this somehow. She hesitated, then sighed. I've heard rumors. There's an old farmhouse just outside town where people say he still does business with a few guys who stayed loyal to him. I'd rather stay as far from there as possible, but, maybe that's where we should start. The thought of facing Raymond made my stomach turn but there was no way out of this. If we were going to end this, it had to be on our terms. The next morning, Sarah and I drove to the edge of Millwood. I took in the desolate, empty landscape, my chest tightening as we neared the farmhouse. As we parked, I could feel Sarah's anxiety. Her fingers trembled as she gripped the door handle. We sat in silence, staring at the rundown building from a distance. Are you sure he's in there? I whispered. She nodded, her gaze unwavering. I can feel it. I don't know if it's instinct or what, but I know he's in there, waiting. Maybe he thinks I'll come to him, that I'm scared enough to show up. The tension between us was thick as we both considered the next step. We couldn't just knock on the door and confront him. If he really was as dangerous as she said, this could go wrong in a hundred different ways. As we were debating, a tall, gaunt man stepped out of the farmhouse. He was older, his hair graying and face weathered, but he still held a kind of intimidating presence that sent chills down my spine. That's him, Sarah whispered, her voice almost a whimper. A rush of protectiveness surged in me. Stay here, I said firmly. Let me talk to him. Ethan, don't. You don't know what he's like. Her grip on my arm tightened. Please. But I was determined. This was my family now too. And if Raymond wanted a fight, I was ready to give it to him. Taking a deep breath, I stepped out of the car and walked toward him, feeling his eyes on me, assessing me as I approached. I could sense the same steely resolve in his gaze that my father had, but there was something darker in Raymond, something unhinged. Who are you? He asked, his voice low and dangerous. I'm Ethan, I said, my voice steady. Sarah's brother. He laughed bitterly, shaking his head. Stephen's other son. Of course. Took you long enough to show up. The venom in his tone caught me off guard. Look, I don't know what you want with her, but this ends now. 
You're not dragging us into whatever mess you've gotten yourself into. He smiled, a twisted, cynical smirk. Oh, really? You think you can waltz in here, act like some kind of hero, and make demands? He took a step closer, his eyes cold and unflinching. You're not like Stephen, boy. You don't know what kind of fire you're playing with. His words struck a nerve, and before I could stop myself, I took a step forward. Try me, if you so much as look at Sarah again, I'll make sure you regret it. Raymond's smile faded, replaced by a hard, calculating look. I don't think you understand, Ethan. Your father and I, we had history. He owes me. And now, so do you. I clenched my fists, struggling to control my anger. What are you talking about? What does my father have to do with this? Everything, he spat. Stephen was supposed to be my partner. We were going to run things together. But he turned his back on me, ran off, and left me to clean up his mess. And now, I'm calling in the favor. I shook my head, incredulous. He didn't know you anything. He left because he knew you were dangerous. He was trying to protect us. Protect you? He laughed again, this time a hollow, humorless sound. Is that what he told you? Let me tell you something, kid. Your father wasn't the saint you think he was. He was just as deep in this as I was, only he was smart enough to walk away. I didn't know what to believe, but the cold, empty feeling in my gut told me there was truth in his words. My father had always been guarded, careful, but I never thought it was because he was hiding something like this. I squared my shoulders, meeting Raymond's gaze head on. I don't care what you think he owed you. Whatever debt he had with you died with him. Raymond's expression hardened, his eyes narrowing. Maybe, but there's still one way you can pay me back. He looked past me, his gaze settling on the car where Sarah sat, watching us with wide eyes. No, I said, stepping into his line of sight. You leave her out of this. But Raymond only smirked, a sinister glint in his eyes. I don't think you're in any position to make demands, Ethan. Either she helps me get what I need, or you'll find yourselves in more trouble than you can handle. With that, he turned and walked back into the farmhouse, leaving me standing there, fists clenched, heart racing. As I returned to the car, Sarah looked at me, her face pale. What did he say? He wants something from us, I said grimly, and he's not going to stop until he gets it. As we drove away, I felt a growing determination. This man, this stranger who was supposed to be my uncle, had dragged my family into his world of chaos, and I wasn't going to let him destroy what was left of it. The ride back to Sarah's was silent, thick with tension. My mind was racing, but one thought kept returning, whatever Uncle Raymond wanted, he wasn't going to stop. If we were going to get through this, I'd have to understand exactly what he was after and why he felt he was owed anything. I looked over at Sarah, her face was pale, her gaze fixed out the window as we drove past the rolling fields. I could tell she was somewhere between fear and fury, and for a moment, I could see just how much our father's secrets had cost her. Whatever he'd hidden from her, from both of us, had shaped her entire life. But if we were going to end this, we'd have to face it together. Sarah, I started, breaking the silence. You know him better than I do. Do you have any idea how we can make him leave us alone? She took a shaky breath, as though choosing her words carefully. Raymond won't just leave us alone, Ethan. He's the type to hold on to grudges, twist them until he feels justified. He's dangerous because he thinks he's entitled to something. And with our father gone, he thinks he can get it from us. But why now? I pressed, frustrated. Why, after all these years, does he suddenly want something from us? What does he need so badly that he'd hunt down his own family? Sarah glanced at me, her expression unreadable. He's broke, Ethan, I found out a few months ago. He gambled away everything he had left in some high-stakes game. And he has debts, serious ones. I nodded, piecing together the fragments of the story. Raymond wasn't just a criminal. He was desperate and desperate people were capable of anything. So, he's after money? I asked. Money, yes, but there's something else. She hesitated, almost as if unsure whether to continue. Raymond's debts are tied to some powerful people, people who don't just let things go. He thinks he can leverage us to get what he wants, either we pay him off, or he's threatening to take whatever he can get his hands on. Our father's name, his legacy, everything. I felt my stomach drop. He wanted control power over us, over the memory of our father, the life he'd built. It wasn't just about money. Raymond wanted to drag us into his mess, to make us pay for his mistakes. Sarah, I said slowly, what if we could find something on him, some way to make sure he doesn't have any hold on us? She shook her head, a faint smirk crossing her face. I tried that once, Ethan. I found out all about his shady dealings, but he had connections in every corner. Cops, judges, you name it. He always had people protecting him. 
That's why dad left in the first place. There was a beat of silence as we pulled up to her house. We sat in the driveway, both staring blankly at the dashboard, the weight of everything hanging over us. But then something clicked. My father's letter, it was almost as if he'd known that this day might come. Maybe he hadn't been able to face Raymond himself, but he'd left us something, hadn't he? Clues that would lead us to the truth, or maybe to a way out. I need to check something, I said, jumping out of the car and heading for my bag, where I'd left the letter. Back inside, Sarah watched as I laid out the pages on her kitchen table. This letter, I said, tracing the lines of my father's handwriting, it has to mean something more. Dad wasn't just telling us about you, Sarah. He was trying to give us a warning. She nodded slowly, her eyes scanning the words with newfound intensity. You think he left something hidden in the letter? I nodded, feeling a spark of hope. Maybe. Look, he was a lawyer. He knew how to be careful with his words. If there's something in here we're missing, we just have to find it. For hours, we pored over every line, every word, trying to decipher any hidden message. I could see my father's careful handwriting, his precise choice of words. And then, near the end of the letter, a line caught my eye. Look where we buried our roots, and you'll find what you need. Sarah, what does that mean? I asked, my heart pounding. Does that mean anything to you? She squinted at the page, then looked up at me, her eyes wide. Yes, I think I know where he means. That night, we drove to an abandoned plot of land on the outskirts of Millwood. It was overgrown, the weeds waist high and the ground uneven. But I recognized it from my childhood, my father had once pointed it out as the place where our family had owned land generations ago. This was where he'd started his life in Millwood, before everything went wrong. The old shed was barely standing, its roof sagging and walls covered in moss, but as we stepped inside, Sarah and I both knew we were in the right place. On the wall, carved into the wood, were initials, ST and RT my father's and Raymond's. This was where it had all started. Help me look, I said, feeling a strange sense of urgency. If dad left us something, it has to be here. We searched in silence, our flashlights scanning the shadows. And then, behind a loose floorboard, I found it, an old metal box, its edges rusted but intact. My hands trembled as I pried it open, revealing a bundle of yellowed papers and a worn leather journal. Flipping through the pages, I found handwritten notes, legal documents, and photos. But one note stood out, scrawled hastily across the inside cover of the journal. If anything happens, this is your protection. Trust no one. Sarah, I whispered, holding up the journal. This, this is everything. It's a record of all Raymond's dealings. Dad kept it all. Evidence of his crimes, the people he worked with, everything. Her face lit up with a glimmer of hope. We could use this. We could finally end this. But my heart sank as I realized the weight of what we held. This wasn't just a journal. It was a death sentence for anyone connected to Raymond. If he found out we had this, he wouldn't hesitate to come after us. In the days that followed, we kept the journal hidden, contacting a lawyer dad had trusted in Millwood to see if we could use it to protect ourselves legally. The lawyer, Tom Brenner, assured us he'd help, but he warned us to be cautious. People in Raymond's circles are watching, he said. Be smart, and don't let anyone see that journal. But our movements must have been too obvious. A week later, I returned to my motel to find the door cracked open, and my heart stopped. Inside, the room was trashed. Clothes, bags, papers, everything scattered across the floor. And the worst part? There was no sign of Sarah. Frantically, I called her cell phone, but it went straight to voicemail. She had vanished, and deep down, I knew Raymond was behind it. Just when I thought all hope was lost, a text message flashed on my phone, meet me at the farmhouse, tonight, alone. I didn't recognize the number, but I knew it could only be him. That night, I walked into the farmhouse, my heart pounding. Raymond stood there, smug and defiant, with Sarah sitting beside him, her hands bound. The fear in her eyes was real, but she managed a weak smile when she saw me. Good to see you, nephew, Raymond sneered. I knew you'd come. Now, where's my journal? I held his gaze, my mind racing. I had the journal in my bag, but I couldn't just hand it over. It was the only leverage we had. I'll make you a deal, Raymond, I said, my voice steady. You let Sarah go, and I'll give you what you want. He chuckled, crossing his arms. You're in no position to bargain, Ethan. You think that journal scares me? I've dealt with worse than you. I took a deep breath, trying to control my anger. If you don't let her go, I'll make sure every name in that journal gets leaked. You'll have enemies on every corner, Raymond. This will end. For a moment, he faltered, his face darkening, but then he smirked. You think you're the first to try and threaten me? 
Your father tried to take me down once too, and look how he ended up. With that, he lunged at me, but I was ready. I dodged, grabbing the journal and shoving it into Sarah's hands. Run, I yelled, blocking Raymond as she slipped out the door. He swung at me, but I managed to stay on my feet. This ends here, Raymond, I said through gritted teeth. We struggled, but finally, I overpowered him. As he lay gasping for breath, I looked down at him, feeling the weight of every terrible thing he'd done. I left him there, defeated, knowing he'd finally face justice. Sarah and I returned to Chicago, the journal safely in our lawyer's hands, Raymond's grip on. Us was finally broken, and as we started to rebuild our lives, I felt a strange sense of peace. We were free, no longer bound by his shadows. For the first time, Sarah and I were truly family, bound not by secrets or lies, but by the strength it took to overcome them. Together, we were finally safe.